Okay, friends, here we are. I'm Rick Standridge, uh, South Carolina, Greenville. The first of uh, many, a FET chat. That's FET chat. And uh, uh, we're going to describe this as a, um, uh, an installment. And I'm here in my studio, as you can see around me, and I'm very excited to be a part of this team uh, as we explore the uh, venues of Paperless Magazine with FET. And I'm delighted to have as my first guest, Mr. Jay Handler. Jay Handler, the marketing guy. There you go, Jay, pleasure to be here. Jay, it's a pleasure indeed to have you here with us in my studio. Jay, um, uh, my job is to talk to you about uh, many things, but one is uh, the nature of your work. I'm an artist, I paint for a living. Uh, my job is to infuse a, a, a visceral conduit of information to process to someone else that will move them forward. Uh, your job is a, as marketer, to do what? Exactly the same thing, really. It, in a different context, perhaps, but really exactly the same thing. My job is to talk to a business owner to find out exactly what his story is. What are his needs? What are his pains? You know, we talked a little bit before coming on camera about pain indicators. Yeah, I, I, I like that word, pain in, indicator. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, every business owner says, I need more business. I need more clients. I need the phone to ring more. I need whatever the case is. I need more cash coming into the business. And usually my response to them is, well, that's fantastic, but tell me more. That, that tells me that you have a problem. It doesn't tell me what the problem is. So we need to really talk. We need to develop that a little bit more and, and really figure out exactly what that business owner is looking for before we can create whatever it is we're going to create for them. And so this would be any type of business then, Jay, or, or is there specific relationships that you have with specific businesses? Well, quite honestly, lately I've been focusing a lot on chambers of commerce. I've been working a lot with uh, associations and, and nonprofits, things along those lines through chambers of commerce. But realistically, my background goes to radio industry. I've been in the radio industry for 15, 20 years, uh -huh. selling advertising to companies from you know, your mom and pop, uh, you know, taco stands to major uh, automotive dealerships and Nissan International. So all sorts of different things. But uh, yeah, I, I, I guess I get a big kick or my biggest thrill is in helping a local entrepreneur, you know, the small to medium sized business, the guy that's, that's this is his entire budget. And if I don't come through for him, you know, he's in trouble. But, but, but everybody, I mean, in, in, in this uh, entrepreneurial capitalistic world we're living in, <clears throat> everyone wants their bottom line to read sure. with, in the black. Absolutely. And have positive, make no apologies for making a profit. So how, <clears throat> how, do, you, how do you intrinsically get someone who's really their motivation is the bottom line? Right. How, do, <clears throat> how do you put something inside of that uh, uh, to someone who's, who says, listen, I've tried everything and I need more clients, sure. which you said, th those are pain indicators. Right. How does that relate differently from what you're going to infuse sure. them with? Well, what I want to do, I want to find out their story. You know, I need to ask them questions. And I think that's probably what sets me apart from a lot of the other marketing folks out there. I just ask more questions. I, I you know, I pride myself on asking every question I could possibly ask, because again, you know, much like the doctor, you know, you can't prescribe without diagnosis. You know, you have, to, you have to get an idea of what's going on with the patient before you can prescribe medication. So what I do, is, you know, perfect example, right? I had a client of mine that said to me, Jay, I want more business. And I said, fantastic, Alan, tell me more. And he tells me more about why he wants more business. And it, it kept coming back to, I need more money, I need more money, I need more money. But all of those, again, pain indicators, they don't really say what the real story is. Well, after digging a little bit and asking the right questions, what I came to find out was, Alan had just bought a boat. Now, it was against his wife's better judgment. So Alan's up, you know, kind of up the creek. He bought the boat. Uh -huh. And he's trying to provide enough income to make sure that the boat actually has some place to dock, that they have gas to put in the boat, that they can afford to take weekends and go enjoy the boat with the family. Otherwise, mama's not happy. And you know what happens when mama ain't happy. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody happy. happy. That's right. So really what it came down to really was Alan's need to make sure that he had an extra $2,000 a month to make sure that he could put that boat somewhere, that he could gas that boat up, that they could afford to take family vacations on the weekends and go do something with the boat to make sure that he wasn't getting destroyed at home by a very, very angry wife who wasn't really thrilled with him getting the boat in the first place. <laughs> Love this analogy. Uh, the name of the name, I'm sorry, you were gonna, you were gonna add? No, no, just, I mean, that's, that's what I do. I need to figure out exactly what the real problem is because until we uncover the true issue, there's no way that we can 
start to prescribe what's going to fix that. Well, you know, Jay, there's a, there's a business to art and an art to business. And Absolutely. I, I, I uh, to push paint around in today's world and, and make a living doing it, there's, there's a lot of boats that need to be floating out there, <laughs> and right. we don't know where the gasoline's coming from. So I can relate to that. Mark, the marketing department, Jay, that's the name of, of your, uh, your company. Why did you choose that as opposed to, why a department rather than the marketing company or something? Why? Well, you know what, I think I mean, everybody- Is there a reason for that? No, there is. You know, I think Everybody wants to have a marketing department. Everybody wants to have a $125,000 or $150,000 a year guy heading up their marketing division. The problem is most companies either are too small to afford that or they frankly don't need somebody every single day doing that. They've got smaller needs. They need, you know, look, you and I both know companies throughout Greenville, throughout the upstate that are so large, they've got massive marketing budgets. Sure. Most of your micro businesses, your small businesses, even your medium businesses, they just don't have that ability. So. For the person who says, you know what, I absolutely need somebody, 120, 130, $150,000 a year guy, just can't afford to have him. I want to be their marketing department. So you can outsource your assistant, you can outsource your IT, now you can outsource your marketing as well. And I can tell that you're passionate about your work. I, I, and, 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 and as a theater person myself, I, I founded the South Carolina Children's Theater in 1987. Thank you very much. I'm <laughs> proud of that. Uh, I can recognize one of that fell off the tree. You, you, you have a theater background. I do. Yeah, and would you say that that is implemented into the way that you perform and the way that you do business? Oh, no question it is. I, you know, I do a lot of public speaking. I'm, I'm called upon a lot to do webinars, seminars, uh, you know, training sessions, staff facilitation, things along those lines, staff development training for chambers of commerce. And quite frankly, I think a lot of it is, it, I, I fall back to my acting background because a lot of it is voice inflection. It's knowing how to make sure that you keep that audience paying attention to you, how you keep them enthralled in your story. Most of this is nothing but storytelling. And you know, when I tell you the story of Alan, I can make the story fun, I can make it lively, I can, I can make you relate because I'm able to act out the story a little bit for you and, and get you there. I think a lot of it comes back to that theater arts background and being able to, to relate to a crowd, to an audience. Okay, with passion, yep. Jay, comes joy. Or, and also suffering. But what would you say that, I mean, what is your joy? What is the greatest joy in your work? You know, it goes back to another quote, I guess. Uh, Zig Ziglar has often been quoted as saying, you know, you can get everything that you want in life when you help enough other people get what they want. And I truly... Love that. Well, you know, and a lot of people say, oh, I love helping other people. I, you know, but you don't always know how genuine it is. With me, I can't, I, I can't tell you. All I can do is show you. But I truly enjoy, I love, I, I mean, my thrill is when a business owner says, Jay, that was amazing. You know, you knocked it out of the park for us. You really helped us get over a hump. You, you know, I can play with my boat. My wife loves it. <laughs> you know, when I hear that, man, oh man, I know I'm done. I know I've done it. Have you always wanted to be in marketing? No, I was, uh, growing up as a kid, I was always going to be an attorney. You know, my, my plan was to uh, go to law school. For you. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> my plan was to go to law school and graduate just in time for the uh, Atlanta Olympics. And I was going to move to Atlanta and I was going to be the big shot up and coming young attorney in the up and coming new city of Atlanta. I didn't know Atlanta was already a huge thriving metropolis at that time. I, who knew? Hello, Gone with the Wind. Yeah, well, I was from Chicago. What did I know? <laughs> but, you know, I was going to come out here and uh, join the, uh, the Atlanta skyscape and I was going to be this, you know, hot shot young attorney, and, and when the Olympics came and made Atlanta huge, I was gonna be riding that wave. What happened? Life. <laughs> you know? and, 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 what it, <laughs> and that got in the way of it. Life, life sometimes does that, yeah. I, um, I found myself in a, uh, an advanced academic program in high school. Uh, school had always been so easy for me, all the way through to high school. Straight A's all the way through, and I never had to crack a book. I never had to study. It was just simple for me. Came um, easy. It really did yeah, yeah. until high school, and I challenged myself for the first time ever. I was in an advanced, uh, an advanced academics uh, high school back in Rockford, Illinois, and I learned very early in that school setting. I never learned how to learn because it was always so easy for me. It always learn just learn how to learn. That's a wonderful. Well, one. I never knew. I, you know, I didn't know that I didn't know how to study. I didn't know that I didn't know how to test. I didn't know that I didn't know how to get ahead. So everything had always been so easy for me. All I had to do was just show up and you know, grab a pencil and, and write and I would be fine. I could always write very well. But when it came time to start learning advanced theory that I just had never had to do before and it became difficult, I had to start learning. 
and these other kids just ate my lunch. And, and uh, for all the kids in Rockford, Illinois, and uh, Auburn High School's uh, uh, academy program from 1988, you kicked my butt. Well done. Well done. Nice job. <laughs> yeah, good going, guys. And I did. But it, it, it gave me, you know, it, it redirected my life. But it also gave me new strength. It gave me a new direction. It, it helped me realize that, you know, while I have failed in one area, I can succeed in another. Or where I was weak in one, I can be strong in another. Yes. So, so uh, Greenville, uh, yeah. here you are in Greenville. Uh, I love Greenville. Uh, I haven't always loved Greenville, <laughs> but I've been good to Greenville, and now and Greenville's been very good to me, and I love it. And uh, the cultural, uh, the cultural atmosphere here is on a supernova. Uh, acceleration, I believe, and I'm seeing it, and I, I, I do believe I'm contributing to it. As are, as are you. What, what is your What are your thoughts, a, about Greenville, and then what What do you think is the passion of Greenville? How about that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I I could do what I do anywhere. You know, I could get a laptop and an internet connection, and I could literally do my job from anywhere in the world. And I just got back from a wonderful conference in Nuevo Vallarta, Mexico on a social media uh, speaking engagement. Gorgeous, absolutely the toughest thing it's ever, that I've ever had to do is leaving there. But the beauty was I was coming back to Greenville. And in a very short time, I've been here now five years, Greenville has absolutely become home. Uh, you asked me earlier before we got on camera about you know, where am I from and, and man, I've lived everywhere. I've lived in Chicago and, and Illinois, uh, and Illinois, you like that? Can we cut and redo that one? <laughs> I've, li I've lived in Illinois. I've lived in Phoenix, I've lived in, in Florida, I've lived in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, and I've visited all over the country. And I come back to Greenville because quite frankly, Greenville has become home very, very quickly. And I tell people, you know, it's an absolutely amazing place. You can get further in Greenville in a shorter amount of time than I've been able to get anywhere. Don't you love our airport? Oh, it's fantastic. We've got the sweetest little airport ever. And I say little because it's big, but it's, it's, it's also, it feels comfortable and it feels cozy and it's home. Yeah. I love flying in over the greens and seeing and seeing seeing all of all of that I-85 right there when we're it's landing beautiful. in this in this sweet little airport, easy to get in, easy to get out. Absolutely. You've seen a lot of airports. I have. Not many as easy as Greenville. There's no doubt about that. Love flying in and out of GSP. Uh, the marketing department, ladies and gentlemen, with Jay Handler. Uh, do you have a website? I do. It's jhandler.com. Jhandler.com. Could you? Spell that for sure. us. J-A-Y-H-A-N-D-L-E-R.com. There you go. Rick Standridge, you know where I live, 1021 South Main Street. I'm here painting, pushing paint, or drinking fine wine and having a damn good time. RickStandridge.com. Thanks. First session for FET. Peace.